Hey folks, my name is David Rowe and I'm speaking to you from my tiny little shop here in Mobile, Alabama. It's a guitar building shop. It's something I love to do. I learned over the last few years from watching guys on YouTube doing exactly what I want to do here. Um, they've taken me step by step and showed me every little thing about building guitars and it's turned for me from a curiosity whether or not I could do it to an absolute passion to an obsession and it's really cool. I love it and you can ask anybody I know. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I just I just love the whole I love the whole thing. I really do. You know a guitar is kind of a a functional piece of artwork. Something you could look at and be beautiful and it can make a beautiful sound if you know how to play, which I don't. Wish I did, but I don't. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I watch these guys doing this stuff and I was, the thought of people passing on knowledge through something like YouTube, uh, just sharing their knowledge and showing other folks how to do what they do. I just think that's really cool. And I want to kind of add into that. I want to I want to contribute to that and uh, do my little part. I hope uh, over the next uh, few weeks I'm going to take this pile of wood here and make a guitar. And I'm going to go through each step and explain what I'm doing and show whatever tricks and tips I might have, things I've learned. Uh, maybe I do things in a different way that, that uh, you haven't thought of before. And uh, anyway, I just want to do it. So well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to add into the community that's taught me something great. And I hope you all like it. But anyway, I'm going to take, I've got a pile of wood here I'll show you in a second. And I'm going to take and I'm going to make something like this. This is a guitar I made, uh, oh, probably a couple of months ago now. This is, as you can see, kind of a PRS shaped body. And I did a, a carve on it. Not exactly like a PRS carve, but uh, it is what it is. It's got a beautiful uh, walnut top on it. A very old piece of walnut, one piece walnut. And it's got a curly maple binding on the edge, which I love to do. I learned how to bend it. I've made some jigs. And I'll go into that on, on the guitar I'm going to make. This has a one-piece mahogany back, which is just a gorgeous piece of wood. You can see I did a string through, uh, did a string through bridge, and that's a I did a hip shot bridge, and it's got P90 uh, pickups, which I love. I made them myself too, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Uh, P90 sound great, and uh, anyway, this is uh, going to do a similar neck to this, although this neck is bird's eye maple, uh, walnut, and purple heart. And the one I'm doing is going to be mahogany, wenge, and bird's eye and uh, flame maple. Um, anyway, and this one's got like one of the scooped out necks, you know, like a fender style neck. And then what I'm going to do is going to be a, uh, a tilt back neck. I, I do them at 13 degrees, and I think it looks really cool. And, uh, but anyway, so that's a guitar I'm going to be making, something very similar to this, and I'm going to make it out of this wood here. Oh, actually, let me show you. This is, this is the neck. That's the tilt back headstock I'm going to do there. I'm going to do something just like that. This is, uh, and it's going to be a similar looking neck to this too. It's got uh, mahogany. This one's mahogany, walnut, and uh, bird's eye maple. And the other one's going to, like I said, it's going to be mahogany. Wengi and uh, Flame Maple. This little guitar I made from a grandson. It's like a mini Strat. The color is, call, I call it deep purple. I used a trans tint dyes. Anyway, so this is going to be for his birthday, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to do it for him. I'm going to give it to him. He's three. I don't know if that's too young or not, but I think he's going to think it's really cool. We'll probably drag it around in the backyard and use it as a baseball bat or something, but whatever, as long as he likes it. Anyway, the one I'm going to build, this one's going to have a zebra wood top. And as you can see, this is a piece of quarter saw and zebra wood. I cut it out of a, a piece of four quarter and I book matched it. So the, the grain matches uh, going both left and right. And I milled it down to seven sixteenths of an inch thick, which is what I need to do to do the carve top like I do it. And I think zebra wood's a beautiful wood. I did one, uh, I did one before at a flat sawn piece of zebra wood, and it really looked awesome. And, and I think this quarter sawn, I found this piece at my local uh, hardwood supplier, and, and I figured I'm going to make one out of that. And I think it's going to look really cool. And the other one I made, I may put a picture of it up there. Uh, I did a matte finish on it with a painted back. And this one's going to be, I think I'm going to do a gloss finish, and I'm going to have a natural mahogany back. And this is going to be the back of the guitar here. 
This is a piece of quarter sawn mahogany. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a really nice straight grain quarter sawn mahogany and I joined it in the middle, glued it up in the middle. This was cut out of a piece of eight quarter, um, eight quarter mahogany and I uh, re-sawed it down and, and uh, glued it up and joined it and, and all that, and planed it and it's now an inch and five sixteenths thick. So when I put the top on, I'll have an inch and three quarter guitar. And, uh, and this is gonna have that curly maple binding on it too. Um, which I think is just really cool looking. It's a lot of work, but it looks really cool when it's all said and done, and, and it's worth the extra effort to do it. Um, this is going to be the neck. You see, I got the neck blank all ready to go. And this was uh, cut out of the same piece of wood that the body came out of, the, the mahogany here. So it's also quarter sawn the way I did it. And I have uh, uh, three pieces of flame maple and two pieces of wenge in here. And I think that just makes a super stable neck. Um, you know, it's, it's going to hold up really well. And I'm still going to do a truss rod and all that stuff too, but uh, this should be a really cool neck. And it's an inch and a quarter thick. And I think it's, I don't know, three and three quarter wide, something like that, three and a half wide. It's wide enough to fit the headstock on it without adding wings to it. So uh, anyway, and I think it's good to, to do a multi-piece neck too, because you're using up small pieces of wood. You're not, uh, I feel like I'm getting more out of a, out of a board when I cut them up and glue it, I think it becomes a stronger neck. And, uh, and I'm kind of, you know, being uh, careful with our resources. Anyway, so that's gonna be the neck. And I think I've got this piece of wenge here. I'm thinking about doing the uh, fingerboard out of this. It's just a beautiful piece of wood. I don't know if you could see it in there, but it's got a really nice dark, uh, like a dark brown, coffee brown, and a, maybe a, a kind of a purpley looking grain to it. Uh, I don't see too many uh, fingerboards being made out of wenge, not that I recall anyway, but I just think it would be cool and it's a very hard and dense wood. And uh, anyway, I think it'd make a cool fingerboard. So if it's not good for fingerboards and you know that, I'd appreciate a comment so I don't, don't waste my time. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn this pile of wood into a, hopefully a cool new guitar and I'm gonna do each step along the way and I'm gonna try to explain everything I do. And uh, <clears throat> I've got some footage of me milling this stuff up and making up my body blank and my top and my neck blank and everything and getting it ready to go and I'm going to put that footage, footage in this video. Then on the next video I do, I'm going to be uh, chambering the body. I always chamber my bodies out. I've got a, uh, I use something like this and I chamber the body. So this is my template for chambering the body. And this is also my template that has the P90, uh, P90 pickups in it. And so I'm going to do that in the next video, so I'll probably chamber the body and get ready to glue the top on and kind of go through that step, and then I may go back and start working on the neck. But anyway, I hope you all uh, enjoy this. I hope somebody gets something out of it. And, uh, you know, good luck. And I uh, hope you all do well and, and keep an eye out for the next video. And like I said, I just hope somebody gets some, something out of it. We'll see you later. So here's a few clips of the wood I selected for this guitar build. These are the pieces I'm going to join, uh, mill up. I'm joining and that's a neck piece. Run it through the joiner, squaring everything up before I rip it down. There's my top. It's a four quarter piece of zebra wood. I'm just checking the flatness and everything so I can go on and plane it. And here's the body. I'm cutting it down to the proper thickness. The pieces I cut off I'll use for the control cover cavity and stuff like that. Control cavity cover, I mean. I always get that wrong. Here I'm cutting down the zebra wood for the top. I book match it. will look really good in the end. So I'm getting ready to glue the top together. This is my glue jig. Works really well. A little wax paper keeps it from sticking to the jig. This jig, I can uh, clamp it down. I tighten those nuts up on there, and I tighten it down, and uh, then I put the bar clamps in the little slots in there, so it holds it super flat, and and uh, and I could squeeze it together, and it works really well. Got all of my pieces milled up for my neck. 
I've got my two pieces of mahogany, which will wind up being quarter stone. And I've got uh, three pieces of um, uh, curly maple, two eighth inch pieces and a quarter inch piece in the middle, and two eighth inch pieces of wenge, or wengi, however you want to say it. I think it'll make a cool neck. And it all winds up being quarter sawn. And all three of these pieces of uh, curly maple are cut out of the same piece. I'm going to line them up so the little flames go right through here when it's all said and done. At least I hope. That's the plan. So I'm going to get ready and glue this up. I've got a piece of granite I glue it to. And I glue it up sideways so it holds it nice and straight when it's being glued. So here I'm gluing up the pieces. You can see I've got them uh, laying on a slab of granite. That's really flat and it's strong and it'll hold its uh, it'll hold the flatness when I clamp it down. I could put a piece of wax paper on that too so it doesn't stick to the granite. Here I'm just putting all the clamps on there. I get them uh, straight uh, squeezed together first and then you can see I'll put a wax piece of wax paper and some clamps forcing the thing down onto the piece of granite which will keep it straight in the other direction. This is after I'd milled up my uh, my pieces and cut, cut them to thickness and joined them and I put them in a hot box for a couple days to get it to uh, dry out any more moisture that's in the wood. It also causes it to uh, warp a little bit and gets that warping out of the way as well. So I'm about to bring these back into the shop and uh, and do the final joining and, and planing and surfacing and everything. So I'm showing here that uh, I've got them out of my uh, drying box and that no longer fits together. You can see that joint right in the middle. So it doesn't look so good now. And the bo board's actually uh, cupped a little bit as well. And But I left them thicker than I need them. I think these are about an inch and a half. And I'm going to plane it down to, uh, I need an inch and five sixteenths when it's all said and done. So then I go through the process of uh, rejoining, planing, getting that, that final step. Whenever you cut wood out of, out of the board it came from, it'll, uh, you know, the, the tensions within the grain of the wood itself will cause it to uh, do additional bending. So going through this process of uh, cutting it, drying it, and then cutting it again, it uh, eliminates a lot of that from the future. So your wood should stay much more stable uh, after you've gotten the guitar built if you go through this. So here I'm rejoining it and I ran it through a couple times individual ind with individual pieces and I marked it so I could see what I'm joining off. But it still wasn't coming out just right so I flipped the pieces, uh, reverse the orientation and ran them again and it came out really nice. Now I've got a really good fit. I think I'm going to show here how I've uh, flipped and reoriented the pieces. So as you see there, that's how I clamped them together right there. And it basically makes a mirror image. Each piece makes a mirror image of itself onto the other board when you join it, when you clamp it and join it like that. It worked really well. It's got a good fit now. Here I'm going back to my uh, gluing jig and I'm putting the pieces together. Just like I did with the top. I really like this jig because it has equal uh, clamping pressure going down. And when I put them in there and I glue them up, I clamp it, I, I, I tighten it down part way with the nuts going down. Uh, so that I could still move them with the bar clamps, and then I put the bar clamps on, and uh, and squeeze them together. So then I go back and forth between the bar clamps and the bolts, and as I tighten it, uh, 
so it's 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 able to move in both directions until I get to the full tightness I want in both both directions. So here I sped it up a little bit. I'm just spreading the glue on. Doesn't have to be too thick. You want good coverage, but not too thick. I'm putting a little wax paper in there to keep it uh, keep the glue off the top of my clamp. You can see here I'm snugging them down first by hand. And then I'll go through and pull them a little tighter with my wrench. I start getting the clamps on there. And I'll go back and forth between the clamps and the bolts until it's uh, all the way tightened. So here I've pulled the neck blank out of the uh, gluing jig. I did, and I'm planing it down, getting the surfaces real nice. I want this to ultimately be about an inch and three sixths or an inch and a quarter thick, and I'm working towards that. So once it's been joined, then I'll take it back to my surface sander and run it through to get to the final thickness. And then I've got a good blank I can work with from here. Hey folks, welcome back. I just got back from the park, walked a couple miles, and I feel pretty good. Got my flip-flops on, and I'm ready to finish my first video ever. I hope it wasn't too bad. I did my best. I'll learn. I'll get better. Anyway, I uh, hope you all got something out of it. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, if you will come back uh, in a couple days, I'm going to have the next uh, portions of this guitar being built. I'll show you where I've uh, gotten the body to the next step. Got some, uh, did some control cavities and some different things, router and done. Got the top glued on it. I've brought the neck to the uh, next stage here. I've got my scarf joint glued up. That'll all be on the next, next couple of videos. Anyway, appreciate you all sticking around for it. Hope you got something out of it. I enjoyed doing it. It was fun. It was a learning experience and I enjoyed it. And uh, anyway, good luck. Talk to you all soon and keep your eye out for my next video.